Hello friends, I'm back, and you are looking at the face of a man who has finished the book of Leviticus. Yes, yes, I did it. I finished it. Um, maybe I made it out to be harder to read than it actually was, but there's definitely a lot of weird stuff in Leviticus, and I shared a, a little post on Instagram and Facebook about, hey, I'm in Leviticus, and you know, I, I made a joke about, you know, it's where like 89.7% of all read the Bible in a year plans and go to die. And multiple people left comments and were like, just wait till we get to numbers, bro. And I was like, <laughs> great. So I have numbers to look forward to. So, um, but yeah, Leviticus was cool. I tried a couple different things and I'm excited to share that with you in this video. Before we, we really get into it, just a, a little housekeeping note. I, I posted this on, on socials and stuff that I was going to, I obviously, this is not like week four did not come right away after the, the, the last week. And that's because I decided I was kind of going to hit where... I was going to be like in between books and so I decided to wait a few days and finish Leviticus to record this update to really focus on that. I'm going to do the same thing with numbers. It might take me a little longer than a week to finish numbers but I'm going to do a video on numbers. I'm going to do a video on Deuteronomy. That's what I'm going to do now um, now that I've kind of gotten into it because I think that will be a little bit more a little bit better as far as just kind of a cohesive video. So um where we left off, I was kind of getting ready to finish uh, Exodus. And so I did. I, I finished Exodus, and then I, I spent a day kind of going back and reviewing everything in Exodus and writing all my notes in the chapter, using my commentaries and stuff. Um, if you haven't seen that, then you can go to the, the other videos I've released in this series. And I talked about, you know, all my, my markers and my pens and my commentaries and stuff like that. And this process of, you know, once a week stopping and going back and reviewing everything and answering some of the questions and, and doing a little bit of study, I've really enjoyed that. So... I noticed at the at the end of Exodus, you know, we've gone from, you know, the people leaving Egypt in the actual Exodus and then God's kind of setting up these rules for the tabernacle and he kind of, it like repeats itself basically several chapters where it says, okay, they followed through. Um, one thing I noticed, and I'm not sure if I said this in the last video, but it talks about those two guys where the Holy Spirit moved in them. They were filled with the Spirit to build and to create. And I loved that. So for anyone who's like a creative person or an artist, like right there in Exodus, these people are, are filled. I'm looking out my window. People are walking by my house. Sorry. Um, people are filled with the Spirit to, to, to be creative, which I absolutely love, and, and to build this this tabernacle, this tent, this place where God is going to be. And then it kind of dives into to the book of Leviticus. So a couple of things. I got my B cam here. So right here at the end of Exodus, I noted that the cloud of glory came down and Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because of the cloud settled upon it. And the glory of the Lord filled it. You see, I wrote, what happened? Like, what's going on there? So I was wondering what happens. And then you get, you immediately go into Leviticus and it says, he word from, the Lord summoned Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting. So I was, I was right here at the beginning going, wait a second, what's going on? And a couple people in the comments of the last video mentioned what I love about Leviticus is that it starts from the temple. And then in Numbers, if I, if I show you this in Numbers, in Numbers, you go to the first chapter of Numbers and it says, look at this, I've already gotten there, in the tent of meeting. So Leviticus starts out God speaking to Moses from the tent. Now in Numbers, after the end of all these rules and regulations and everything, he's speaking to God in the tent and like the significance there. Now, for what it's worth, a couple of commentary writers didn't really make much of that, but a couple did. They said, yeah, Leviticus is like showing us what it means to, to be able to be there with God in right relationship and to, and to be there, for Moses to be there. So I thought that was really insightful. The other thing that I did this time around is I opened up, I've, I've talked about the Bible Project on my channel. They do these videos where it's overviews of books of the Bible. And so I pulled up the Leviticus video before I started diving in so I could read about Leviticus and kind of get, it's like a seven minute video and it gives you an overview of the entire book of Leviticus. And I was able to see the structure of it. Like there's these moving pieces going through where there's little bits where they go from, you know, the, the sacrifices and the offerings, then they go into the, the Levites and the priests and what they're gonna be doing, then they move into the purity laws, and then you get to this center section in chapter 16 and 17 with the Day of Atonement, and you, you see the structure, which for me, the way my brain works, that really helps for me to see that beforehand and to be able to kind of notice that as I was going through. And so, so back here, you know, I kind of wrote down some key things here. Actually, I think I wrote down these things that you're seeing after I finished the book. I went back and said, okay, at the very first page of Levit Leviticus, which I think will be helpful in fu the future when I'm referring to these notes to say, oh, here's the major themes that I took from Leviticus. So major themes are holiness, God's presence, the covenant, and sacrifice. Those are some of the major themes that are going on here. And then you start to march through. And yes, like Leviticus is like, full of, of like grain offerings and sacrifices and like some, some really weird 
stuff. Like you see there's certain pages here where I didn't take a whole lot of notes because I'm just like reading about the instructions for the temple and I'm I'm noting like which offering. So I, I was like keeping track. Okay, that's the burnt offering. That's the sin offering. That's, you know, different pieces of anointment and the grain offering. And I was like able to keep track of that. I'm noticing right here, like I just did a little bracket, like that's a summing everything up for the section that just happened. And we're moving into one of those new sections, which I'm able to recognize now. Um, but then I started asking some questions and digging in a little bit and seeing what's going on. You see, there's my, like the end of week four, I was only through 11. I actually powered through the last couple of days, um, a couple of days ago to finish this and really get it done. But I, I'm getting somewhere. So in chapter 13, we start talking about leprosy and skin diseases. And that goes, look at that, two full pages of the Bible and then two more full pages of the Bible. We're talking about skin diseases and it's pretty gross. Like there's some, like it's gnarly stuff, right? It's like, why do we need, like, why? And I just wrote this down right here. Why do they take skin disease stuff so seriously? And, and it's about purity. It's about not being impure before God and, and, and this righteous God. We hear about Aaron's sons. They, they did things the wrong way and they were, they were killed. And it's like we're really getting this idea in Leviticus of the holiness of God and how our, like, they're not, you know, like the skin disease is not necessarily, it doesn't really say in here explicitly that they'd sin to get this. They do have to do a sin offering to, to, to be clean. But it's like stuff that happens makes you impure, and, it's, and God is so holy. God is so pure that he can't have that, right? But then I started thinking about this, really dwelling on This is the cool thing about reading the Bible on a daily basis. You start to think about it through the day, and I started thinking, man, what about all those times where Jesus was interacting with people who had skin diseases? What was he doing? He was healing them. I wrote this down here. Note that here, in the, the unclean are removed from the community. That's what they're being told to do. But in the New Testament... Jesus heals them. And one of the things, I think this time reading through Leviticus, I just saw a lot of Jesus in this book. Go into the next chapter. There you go to 16, the Day of Atonement. Leviticus 16, when you look at that structure, 16 and 17, they really are the central part of Leviticus. Every kind of building and then building off of that. And because it's the middle book of the Torah, it's also the central part of the Torah. And the Day of Atonement is like the, the highest holy day for the people of Israel. And you can't talk about atonement without talking about Jesus. And, and several of the commentaries mentioned, when you get to chapter 16 in Exodus, there's all of these shades that the Christian is going, whoa, Jesus fulfilled that, and Jesus fulfilled that. He's not just the sacrifice. He's also the high priest. And it's like, oh, okay. It's starting to connect the dots. This is easily the first time that I've read Leviticus and like, and like seen Jesus in it. And part of that, I think, is just because I've immersed myself in the text. I'm really opening myself up to that. And so that was what was really cool. Is as I was moving through this, I was like, the, the weight of all of these rules and laws and this gross stuff and everything like that, I just, like, we can't, we, we can't follow through on. Like, we're, we're continually going to be needing to make sacrifices and, and offerings to make up for that. And then Jesus shows up, and he is the fulfillment of this law. He is the, the sacrifice. He is the high priest. He he, he steps into this, and this law that I, I don't know about you, but I could, I could never keep up with all this. I could never keep up with all this. It would be impossible for me to, to live by this and to do this. And the beauty of, because of faith in Jesus, because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, because of the fact that he defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. Hallelujah, right? I'm preaching now. <laughs> I, I just, I, I've, I've found that this has been it's challenging, right? Um, the rhythm of being back at work, still struggling with that. Like sometimes I'm reading the Bible at 8 or 9 o'clock at night because my day's been crazy. Sometimes I'm right here first thing in the morning trying to do it before I go to work. Um, but the rhythm of it, the challenge of it, and, and the wanting it has made Leviticus, a book that I have joked about, is like confusing to read and a lot, has made it really meaningful. And I think that's probably the, the coolest thing I've learned so far in this process. Like, I got a lot of good stuff out of Genesis and the first half of Exodus because it's such a great story. But even now, hearing like the, the weeds and the thickness of it, of, of some of the really dense stuff that I'm going through in Leviticus and apparently numbers coming up, I trust that God's going to continue to show me stuff as I press into this. And I'm really, I'm really excited about that. So, um, Last but not least, the Bible is holding up really well. It's a bonded leather Cambridge Bible that I've been throwing in my backpack at least four or five days a week, and it's holding up really well, and it's starting to get a little bit extra floppiness to it, and, and I, I really like it. But overall, it's going well. 
Um, I would love to know if you have any feedback or thoughts or if you've been reading through and you've gotten to Leviticus, let me know what you've struggled with. Now, I'm not, I don't want to say that this has been like all perfect. There's a couple of days in Leviticus where I was just like, okay, I just got to finish, you know, because it's just, it's dense and it's weird and, and it's hard to keep up with. But also, mostly it's been, it's been cool. And I think part of it's been like reading it in the morning and kind of thinking about it throughout the day. So, but again, questions, thoughts, uh, encouragements, whatever, if you have, if you have, leave those in the comments and I would love to get back to you. And the plan here is to, to dive in. I've already actually started numbers. So it's probably going to take me nine or 10 days to finish reading numbers. I mean, at the end of week four, I, I was ahead. I was like, I, you know, I'm trying to do 21 pages a week and I was, I was ahead by like 10 pages. So I'm a little bit ahead of the curve, but not too far ahead. So um, it'll be a little bit over a week before the next video, but I'm going to come back and kind of do another recap of numbers and then keep doing the same thing moving forward. But again, thank you for the encouragement. So many of you, the last couple of videos have just really been encouraging in the comments and saying, I'm with you. I'm doing this. Thanks for the inspiration. That's what this is all about. It's just kind of sharing my journey. I'm really, I'm excited to watch these videos back in 10 years, you know, and, and see what the process was like, but also to kind of just share about it along the way. So I won't keep you any longer. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.